Hey everybody, I um, want to do a quick video on how you can build an installer in LabVIEW. Um, so have a project here um, and one important thing with your installer is um, if you're trying to install a LabVIEW application you need to already have a build for the actual LabVIEW application. So um, you can also build installers that don't specifically install an application. Um, you know, if you wanted to just have a custom installer that installs certain drivers or something, you could do that. But if you want to actually take like your LabVIEW application and install it onto a machine, um, you're going to want to already have a um, uh, basically your application um, build spec already set up and built. Um, then all we need to do is go to build specs and go to new and select installer. Um, this one will take just a second to load. Um, yeah, I think out of all the build specs, this one is the takes the longest to load. Um, and it also typically takes the longest to build as well, um, especially if you're including a lot of different uh, drivers and stuff in your application. Um, so up here, we can specify a build specification name. This is basically what's going to show up over here. So I can go... Um, just choose that name. I can choose a product name. So um, this will help define basically, uh, you know, uh, if you're installing this to program files, for example, um, it'll create like a folder called JSON view or whatever you want it to be called. Um, you also can specify the name of the actual uh, exe to run for the installer. So install.exe is default. If you want to call it something else, you can. You know, if you wanted to change it to setup or some custom name, you can. And then we can choose the destination where we want this to um, basically get built. So I'm just going to drag in that directory. Um, so by default, right, this is going to install two program files. Um, so that's kind of the default location is it's going to pull in that product name and it's going to try to put it in program files. So that's pretty typical for an exe. Most exes run in program files. Um, and program files, right, it just says program files. LabVIEW is actually smart enough to know whether you're in 32-bit LabVIEW or 64-bit LabVIEW. So it'll say program files. That could be program files x86 or just regular program files, depending on which version of LabVIEW you're in. Um, it only gives you one option, so it doesn't let you um, necessarily take, um, you know, a 32-bit application and put it in like the 64-bit directory. And yeah, if I mouse over this, you actually see that it says C program files x86. Um, and I can mouse over all of these, and I can actually see, you know, where these locations are if I'm not sure, you know, where it's potentially pointing me to. Um, but yeah, um, so here I can basically define. Um, where I want this to go. Um, by default, it's program files, and that's typically where you want this stuff to go. Um, but you can, you know, overwrite that. You can create folders. I can add additional destinations, other places, and I can basically, you know, nail down in here, right? So if I wanted to create like a additional folder that's a child of JSON view, um, I can. Um, if I want to also be able to put stuff in here. Um, and I can create multiple other locations, right? If I wanted to create, you know, something under Windows, you know, uh, and call this, you know, data. So maybe my application gets installed here, but certain other things are getting installed here. Um, I can do that, right? So I can put stuff in as many locations as I want. Um, it's really up to you uh, what you want to do. Um, but that would be how you can do that. Um, next, we need to go to source files. So we need to specify what files we want to be installed. So um, for example, you can see here my demo exe. This is my actual build. Um, so I can just select the build and I can tell it to go in this directory that I've specified. So program files, JSON view, and then it's going to put my exe there. So um, that's a uh, Typically what you want to do is just put your application in program files under whatever name you've specified. Um, and you know, you might even want to maybe not create a folder for every individual 
um, exe. You might create like a company name directory and then put all of your exes in like a subfolder in that company name directory or something like that. It's up to you really, but um, yeah. And then also I can also uh, transfer other files. For example, if I really wanted to transfer this, you know, PNG file, um, I can specify where I want that to go. So I can put that, you know, hey, I want this PNG to be on every, every user's desktop. I can do that. So I can take whatever files I want. I can even transfer the source VIs. I can do anything I want to just transfer all these files to the locations on the, the target where I want them to be. So you can just set up your environment with whatever it needs to be able to run properly. Um, next, I have these source file settings. So I can kind of override some details of VIs. For example, um, I can basically overwrite certain properties. So I have this INI and this aliases file. Um, if I wanted to write, I could set those to be read only. I can make them hidden uh, files so you don't see them unless you have hidden files enabled. I can mark them as system files or vital. Um, and likewise, I can also unlock them, which basically just says, you know, even though this is in program files, which, you know, means uh, typically only an administrator can um, write to the files. You know, maybe anyone can read them, but only an administrator can write. I can check this unlock and it will basically make it accessible to any user. Um, so if there's certain files in certain locations I want to change the behavior of, I can specify that for each individual file or folder here. Um, I also can create shortcuts. So um, let's just uh, delete the default ones so you can see how to create these from scratch. But if I click this little plus icon, I can specify what I want to create a shortcut to. So typically it's gonna be to your EXE. Um, and I can specify the name of that shortcut. And I can specify where I want that to be. Um, so for example, I can do program menu, all users desktop, start menu, start up or send to. And then I also can create a subdirectory. So by default, right, this is gonna be in a folder. Um, called JSON view. Um, I also can delete that entirely and then I won't have a um, folder at all. It'll just be a uh, shortcut right to the exe that's in whatever location. And I can also create multiple um, shortcuts. Um, so, you know, if I wanted one to program menu and one to all users desktop, um, I can do that and I can create shortcuts to other files as well. So it doesn't just have to be to one. I can create shortcuts to different files, um, etc. Um, if you go to additional installers here, I can include dependencies of this application. So by default is going to be selected this automatically select recommended installers. So it's going to select it. It's able to look at your lab view code and say, Hey, this is what you need to run this, this code. And it's going to include it. So that can include, you know, DACMX drivers, uh, iMac drivers, uh, Visa drivers, um, system config, you know, libraries, etc. So um, it's able to basically look in and see what's necessary to run your application. Um, so by default, you typically don't need to mess with this, but you can if you want to uncheck that box. Um, in which case, it's going to load all of the available components. And you can basically go in and select specific things that you want to include. So if you want to, you know, include specific, uh, for example, I want the NI TDM Excel add-in, right? Um, I can include that. Um, but yeah, um, if you're okay with LabVIEW just choosing what, you know, is recommended, you can just leave it like that. Um, Next, you can specify dialog information. So basically in your installer, um, you can specify the language of the installer dialog and also write a welcome title, messages. You can include readme files. You can include a licensing, uh, custom graphics. So basically just customizing when someone actually goes to run in your installer, what it's going to look like um, and what you know is going to be displayed to them. Um, I also can set up uh, my installer to write things to the Windows registry. So if I want to, uh, you know, create certain keys or write certain values to certain keys, I can specify that here. Um, and yeah, basically can go in and, uh, you know, add keys, update values, etc. So that way I can kind of do some uh, setup if I'm using the registry for certain uh, configuration items or whatnot. 
Um, I also can do uh, include my hardware configuration from Max. So if I've got hardware configured a certain way on my uh, machine, um, I can include that configuration so that when the installer runs, the other machine will be set up similarly. So if I have certain custom, you know, uh, setups and aliases and whatnot, um, I can basically deploy that to remote machines. Um, I typically don't use this feature because um, I don't typically use aliases anyways. Um, I like to do a lot of like dynamic discovery type stuff where it'll just check what devices are connected and find, you know, check the uh, compatible devices there and then use it. Um, so I don't typically use this, but you can if um, you want to. Um, version information, you can s uh, basically specify the version of your installer. Um, so yeah, you have your like major, your minor, um, and then basically your build. Um, auto increment is gonna update that build. Um, and yeah, you can include a company name, URL, you know, contact info, phone numbers, etc. And you get an upgrade code and you can click generate to basically generate a new upgrade code if you want to. Um, web services, so if you're working with web services, you can also configure um, how things are being deployed for web services. And Windows security, I talked about this in my uh, EXE build video, um, but I highly recommend you look into applying digital signatures. Um, you will need to buy this from a certificate authority, so you'll have to buy a, the, certificate, the signature from a certificate authority, but this allows you to digitally sign your applications um, so that you actually know that like, you know, this came from a trusted source. Um, and last, um, you can do some advanced stuff. So uh, you can do you know, media spanning, right? So I can, um, I, I've never used that really. Um, I can run certain executables at the end of installation. So if I have something I want to, maybe a third party dependency that I'm not able to just include in my additional installers, like, right, it could be some sort of, uh, maybe I need to install a database, right, with my application. Uh, well, I can run that executable at the end of this and I can pass certain command line arguments to that executable so that it runs. Um, if you need to do more than one executable, um, you're not actually able to link up a whole bunch of EXEs, um, but the way I've worked around that is by um, using batch files. So setting up a batch file, um, and I can, instead when it says run executable, it actually can be a batch file. Um, and then basically just tell that in that batch file, have that call all of the independent uh, third-party installers that I need to install. So it could be different drivers that are not NI stuff. Um, it could be different software components, et cetera. So I've typically done that with batch files. Um, similarly, you can do the same thing before uninstallation. So if I need to uninstall maybe that database or something after when, when someone goes to uninstall my application, um, yeah, I can set that up to do that. Um, and yeah, I can either require a uh, LabVIEW 2021 32-bit development system if I want to force you to have LabVIEW in order to use this or not. And I can also specify system requirements, right? So by default, it's gonna say Windows 7 or later, um, which is a lot of, you know, Windows computers. Um, but if I wanna say, hey, you know, this only needs to run on Windows 10, or 11, um, I can choose that. And that way if someone tries to install this on like seven or eight, it'll throw an error at them and say, hey, sorry, this isn't compatible. So if you're not sure if it's gonna work on like seven, for example, and you don't even want to let someone try, you can basically require it that it be a newer operating system. So it's up to you on how you do that. Um, but yeah, basically when you're done, you can just click OK, and your installer will show up here. And when you want to build it, just right click and go to build. Um, the installer builds do take a little bit longer, so I'm not going to show that right now. But yeah, basically it will generate a in that build directory um, a whole bunch of different files, but the main one is going to be your actual installer, which in my case is just called install.exe. So I can basically share that install folder you know, with whoever, they can install my application. It will install the EXE, but it also will install different dependencies of that, including like the LabVIEW runtime engine. And I can also transfer over critical files um, and I can, you know, update the registry. I can install whatever dependencies it needs and basically just set up the environment so that my EXE can run properly. So yeah, that would be how you can create installers in LabVIEW. Thanks for watching. 
Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.